I'd like to welcome you back to our daily devotion time here at West Yakima Baptist Church. We're in the book of 1 John, and today we want to primarily look at uh, chapter 2, verse number 6. He that saith he abideth in him ought himself also to walk, even as he walked. Now this is about the responsible man living up to your profession of faith. Let's pray. Jesus, thank you. What a beautiful Wednesday you've given us. Lord, we're halfway through the work week. And we're so thankful that you were, have the honor and the privilege to walk through this work week with you. As we unpack the richness of who you are, Lord, prepare our hearts to share and prepare the hearts of those that are listening, Lord, to hear and absorb and mature in who you are. Have your great way in our lives, Father. We honor you in Christ's holy name. Amen. Now, the word walk here in this particular verse is a continuous action. It means to keep on walking, to continuously walk. Now, if a person says that he abides in Christ, he must, first of all, be a responsible person. He ought to walk as Jesus walked. In fact, the word ought means debt, constraint, obligation. The person who professes Jesus Christ, who claims to, that he knows God, is obligated to walk as Jesus walked. He is in debt to walk as Christ walked. Now, how did Christ walk upon the earth? Well, let's look at some of the things. He walked believing and trusting God. He walked worshiping and praying to God. He walked fellowshipping and communing with God. He walked giving and sacrifice all he was and had to God. He walked seeking after and following God. He walked teaching and telling others about God. He walked loving and caring for others just as God said to do. He walked obeying and keeping all of God's commandments. Now, this is the responsible man. The man who lives what he professes. We walk the walk, we don't just talk the talk. If he professes to know God, he walks even as the Lord Jesus Christ walked upon the earth. He believes and he trusts God. He worships and prays to God. And he does all other things that Christ did. He walks in the footsteps of Christ, doing exactly what Christ did. Now, this is the person who knows God. I think it was Paul wrote in Romans, Therefore we are buried with him by baptism into death, that like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we should walk in newness of life. Now, to illustrate that, we can look at it maybe in this way. In today's world, people are crying out for examples of commitment to convictions. Now, unbelievers are growing weary of Christians who fail to live up to what they're preaching. The latest numbers, only 50% of the people who live in this country, the United States of America, claim to have any kind of affiliation with a church. Now that's an indictment against the church. That's not an indictment against the government, against society, against culture, but against the church. Because when they first started ta doing these statistics, more than 70% of the population of this country claimed to have an affiliation with church. And most were proud of that. But let's take some hope. There's still believers who practice what they preach. The president of a large organization was known from shore to shore. And even in 
foreign lands. In the world's eye, he just had it all. Fame, a guaranteed job for life. Most men would have agreed except for the man himself. His wife of many years became ill and so ill that she required constant attention. Advice came freely and we, we, are, we all get plenty of advice whether it's solicited or not. Put her in a nursing home. Hire a live-in nurse. Keep your position. Put your ministry first. But this gracious man refused. Being financially able, he made the decision to resign, take care of his wife himself. Now, after he resigned, he was asked, why? Why did you give up such a wonderful opportunity? Give up a wonderful opportunity? You do not understand. God had sent a wonderful opportunity my way. I count it a privilege that I am the best person on the face of the planet Earth to minister to my wife. She needs me and I need her. Other men can take care, take over an organization, but only I can take care of her. Now this man lived up to his profession. His act of responsibility did more in one day to convict others to act responsibly than what a shelf full of how to do books could have done. So as we think upon this verse today, as we allow it to immerse every fiber of our being, I want you to ask yourself a few questions today. Do your actions cause others to behave responsibly toward God and other folks? Or do your actions cause others to question your profession of faith? If someone did not know you, would they convict you of being a follower of Christ, a true believer? Now in practical terms, how can you live up to your profession of faith? Now, these verses three, three through six of the second chapter that we've been looking at the last few days uh, is the first part of a spiritual checkup. Remember back a few days ago, I asked you if you've ever had a spiritual checkup. Now, and this is concerning whether or not you truly know who God is, know God personally. How healthy are you for your records? God's checkup list is as follows. And here's the things we've looked at uh, in these verses over the last few days. Do you keep God's commandments? The professed man says he knows God, but does not keep his commandments. The obedient man keeps God's commandments. And then the responsible man, what we've looked at here today, lives up to his or her profession of faith. Now, until the great physician grants you a clean bill of health, do not move on to anything else. Make a commitment to follow the doctor's orders. Jesus, we thank you for this day. Help us look and have a real spiritual checkup in our lives. And for all you do to open our eyes and open our heart, we honor you in Christ's name we pray. Amen.